Cool. Just missed it, folks. <laughs> Unfortunately, luck will have it. Just saw a wild turkey. Never seen one at night. I don't think they're much nocturnal. But... And pretty much all you hear are the foot paw prints of the dogs. Some panting, yes. But once again. Cool. I am the Wolf Driver. You're on a Werewolf's Paranormal Midnight Mushing Tour. We've got a lot in store for you tonight, so please stay tuned. That looked like a bright light down there, didn't it? Yeah, that's interesting. Just uh, heads up baseball as we go through here. So, um, usually, uh, oh, ho, ho, let's stop here. and If you can get that sign, McCoy's Ferry. Do you need me to light it? Or can, okay. Can they read it, you think? So, folks, or should I read it? Yeah, read it if you want. Okay, let me get my headlight on. Okay, so on May 23rd, this is McCoy's Ferry. On May 23rd, 1861, Confederates attempting to capture the ferry boat at McCoy's Landing were driven off by the Clear Spring Guard. Here on October 10th, 1862, General J.E.B. Stort crossed the Potomac on his second ride around McKellen's army. So, and that's from Maryland Civil War Centennial Commission. So, pretty interesting. As I said, this whole trail is full of history. Is that a car? Huh. That's interesting. It almost looks, oh, does it come under here? Uh... Yep. Okay, did you get it? I don't know. I think he's backing out. That's well. Where's it come out at? Wow. Was that the park ranger? But the park ranger was cool with us being here at the um, thing. So, Okay, sorry, folks. So we're in a very historic area, as I just read the sign. Hopefully you saw it on the uh, broadcast, McCoy's Ferry, Civil War. And um, looked like us. We're, we didn't even know. We're on top of a tunnel here. It's pretty incredible. And uh, you're tuned in to a Wolf Driver Live Midnight Mushing on a Werewolf's Paranormal Experience. Give me a little bit of it all as Sarah just shook some water on us. Good. There's a car over there. Is he coming on the trail? Probably. Okay, you set? Here we go. Come on, guys. Hike. So, usually we're out here on the trails at night, and um, no one has a problem with it. In fact, we were at... Was it? Yeah. Yep. Howdy! How you doing? Just running dogs. <laughs> yeah, we're we were um we started at Fort Frederick and we saw the park rangers up there. They let us uh, load up there. They stayed for an extra little bit. Yeah, we. Oh oh. <laughs> when they get they they said there was an event up there and the um the lady um officer or whatever she she knows us. We've do, we do we've done this for years and she um yeah because it's cooler for the dogs. Sure, sure. I'll lean forward, dude, so we don't flip. This bike's a little on here. You good? Okay. Here you go. Sure. I was just seeing if this is a permit. 
permitted activity. Yeah, can I see a copy of your permit? Uh, what kind of permit? We don't. You don't have a permit? No. No, I mean, we're just on a bike with the dogs. Oh, so, I mean. I see a lot of cameras. And... Oh, yeah, we're, 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 we film everything. We put it on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, nothing's, we just you do it. You don't have a permit to uh, do this in the middle of the night? See, because this park is closed at dark. Well, we, a lot of times we'll camp down there, so they've never, we've, we've done this for years and never. Okay. They've never had a uh, ranger contact you about them having a permit mm -hmm. doing any kind of things like that? They usually wave to us, like, like down there, yeah. They, uh, I mean, but all along the trail, they usually, hey, how you doing? They love what we do because we give. Is that law enforcement? Or are you talking about no, park rangers, CNO. I mean, uh, CNO park rangers. That down there, I know you said that's a state park. But yeah, I mean, we've done this. CNO park rangers that are law enforcement officers, or CNO park rangers that are just like interpreters. Well, I know some of some of the like Great Falls. No, no, no. I'm, yeah, they're they're retired. The um, support people, the uh, elderly people, they're they usually volunteers. Volunteers, they're the volunteers. Yeah, no, but no, but we've run into people. We've run into officers like yourself, and they, usually everybody just waves and is cool with it. Yeah, we're not we're not commercial. We're just. Uh, um, usually from what. Our contact, I mean, we're friends with the CNO on Facebook and everything. They love what we do because we're just sharing how great the park is. So we just bring good attention, I mean. Yeah, in the middle of the night, well, whenever the park's closed. Yeah. Well, um, when we've camped down there, we, we started by doing it by when camping. You're camping, you're actually paying to camp. Right. So you're actually paying a fee to use the park at night. Okay. Yes, yes, it does. We can't. We come here during the day, to when it's cold out, but it's too warm for the dogs during the day. So that's why we come at night in the cool. Of the, and and nobody's out here, so we're not going to get in anybody's way or anything. And uh, we document it all, like I said. Sure, four ten, five zero four. Yes, five zero four, nine one zero eight. Zero eight. Yes. We've actually done this, believe it or not, in the National Mall in D.C. And the, the but we had the Secret Service and the Federal Police. And no, we didn't have. We never had a. That was their question. But we explained to them we're not professional pr photographers. We have. Not never here. No, no, just there. In a national park, though. I guess the national mall. Not, not contacted. Well, when... is a national park service. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, the Lincoln Memorial. Right. That we went from the Lincoln Memorial to the Capitol, and they their only thing was that we didn't have a permit, but they saw we weren't. Per... That's also here. Yeah. But but we're not when they thought because of all the equipment that we were professionals, uh -huh. professional grade equipment, but we're not we're not on A and E or Discovery or anything. Yeah, so. Exactly. So they said, carry on. Yeah. We had to go through. Actually, he had to call the other officer. I mean, plus it looks a little awkward. And, um, I'm all by myself. Yeah. 185 and a half miles. Right now. We've done this whole trail. So, yeah, I understand. 184. And, and then we've gone to the Gap Trail. We could, we've done the whole way up to uh, Pittsburgh. But not at one time, of course. We do. The Gap Trail is not a national park. It's not. But it's, but it's a continuation of this trail, hypothetically, correct? I mean, that was the whole intent behind Thank trail you. That was turned into a bike trail. But that was originally supposed to be the continuation of this trail back in the 1800s, wasn't it? No, but this trail, this was supposed to go to Pittsburgh. Yeah. You're right. Okay, but it wasn't going to take that path, or it wants to scoot. The coolest thing we did on this trail was the Paul Paul Tunnel, but the problem with the Paul Paul, yeah, well, they freaked out. So we had, what we had to do was. See, that's actually a prohibited too. Is it really? Yeah. No, it, now it didn't say it anywhere down there, yeah, but that was years. What we did was we put so we had walkie talkies and we put someone on the other side, but because we're we're always concerned. Now, how do we get a permit? Uh, I, I got your phone number. Okay. I'm gonna get it and get you in contact with our permit guy and he can okay. explain all this stuff to you. Okay. Does that sound cool? Yo, very cool. Now, let me ask you a question. Would they would they have a problem with me doing it? I mean, you know. I have no 
Okay, so you don't. I don't make the rules. I don't have 36 CFR right here. Right. You know, I just use that to look up. Gotcha. Gotcha. I don't. I don't have it. You know, rote memory. You know, it's like, man, that's something very complicated. What's that? Well, I, we're not wanted, that's for sure. <laughs> but, and we, and we're, like I said, you know, we're here. to do your thing here. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. But you're probably going to be in contact with our tournament guy because uh, it looks like something that's going to be needed as a, a permitted activity if you're going to be doing after dark. Um, okay. When the park is closed, and if you're going to be doing it through the Paw Paw Tunnel. Yeah, well, uh, we, that, the dogs freaked. Well, what we did was we put. We don't allow people to ride horses through the Paw Paw Tunnel specifically for that reason, because if you meet someone in a bicycle or hiking, there's nowhere for that person to go. So because it's such a narrow space, so that, that's why with this large uh, piece of equipment and, and four dogs around it. Well, what we did was, but I totally know what you're saying. We put two dogs on that one to put because they because they didn't want to be on the canal side, but we were still wide. Yeah, but yeah, but, but, you know, got black and white. Yeah, and that was that was. I'm going back and literally. That's awesome, man. That's that, a, thank you. We did about five years ago, but and it was that was during the day. So, but uh, I mean, this place is awesome. We we love it. Hey, thank you. Hey, we always want to cooperate and not do anything we're not supposed to do. Thank you. We we. I wish we could put this um, on the CNO site because, again, a lot of a lot of the um, contact that I've had with people, it, it's it's so cool, you know. And the state um, park officer who was down at for she says, "Oh, I know you guys have seen you out on the trail before." I mean, I know that state park, but we, we've got a pretty good rap. I think a couple people do this actually. Is there? <laughs> cool. Thank you. Are we okay to continue on? Great. Well, um, you think so? I, but I could get a permit. Okay. But they'll they'll tell me about permits and stuff. Yeah. That's cool. I appreciate. It. Is there a permit something I can get for like the year, or is it a time basis? You don't know. Okay. Okay. So I'm not real familiar with how that, that process goes. That's cool. That's cool. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. You Have a great evening, sir. You Thank you. It's cool. Was that on? <laughs> That's cool. People, people commenting. Okay. Oh, you know what? They might be commenting, and uh, it's not showing on there. So, folks, what just happened was, well, it's never happened to us before, where we ran into the park ranger, and the park ranger was concerned with what we're doing, basically because, more or less, they want to make money, and we're not permitted. Now, permanent just means that they get paid a fee because we look so professional, our rig, even though it's all professional equipment, I'm a pro at what I do, but they're more worried about pros documenting this and putting it on A&E or Discovery or any of the big networks. I've went through this with the federal government. Well, this is the federal government, too, in D.C. with the Secret Service. So um, he gave me a verbal permit to carry on, but they're going to pass. And we're out here at night, so he possibly will want me to get permits. But uh, pretty cool stuff. You never know what you're going to run into, like I said. And uh, it was all good. <laughs> <laughs> Were you? Uh, uh, well, th they would just make us pack it up and go home. Dude, we, we've done this literally, um, I'm going to say 50 times. <laughs> Never had a problem with anybody. And you, the, um, a couple, he was a younger officer. A couple of the people we've ran into, they love it. Um, I, got it. You got it? I caught everything that fell. All right. I need to put it back together, right? Okay. I mean, you've got some great shots of that. <laughs> that, that falling apart? <laughs> that was great.
Please, can you see? If I did, it's probably underneath my car. <laughs> Man, that's part of the car. Okay, you might have to hold this, dude. So hold this, and this might be easier that way, actually. Hold this? Yeah, hold this, and just hold this by hand. Is that cool? Yeah. Can you do that? No. Hang on, man. Let me get my hands situated. Yep. I'm going to lay the light down, and I'll just hold the camera like this. Cool. So what just happened, folks? I don't know if you saw the park ranger. He was very nice. He was doing his job. Concerned with what we're doing. I hadn't seen it before. And uh, tell me when you're good. Are you good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, here we go, guys. Hi, come on. And uh, pretty uh. All right, back on. Oh, is the phone still plugged in? As far as I can tell. Oh, to, to what? To the wire. Oh, no. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. I mean, there's a wire. There should be a wire coming out of that. Did, it, did we lose it? This wire. No, it's here. Can you put that in the headphone jack? Oh, God. That just came out, right? And yeah. Poor headphones. Oh. See it? Yep. I hope I can't get my hands. So you got pictures, good pictures? <laughs> okay. Okay, we're ready. Okay, folks, you're back live with us. And uh, we just got uh, pulled over by the cops. <laughs> Not for speeding either. You would have thought so. Actually, just because we're out here at night and um, we've got some professional setups and they want us to be permitted for this. So, um, never been through that, or at least he thought he was a young officer, very nice, and um, could see we were up to just getting the dog some exercise, so he gave us a verbal permit, and uh, told us to carry on. So that won't slow us down for our paranormal exploration tonight on our werewolves episode, as I've been describing on our mush here. Uh, we hope to get to the house. We just, we're about two and a half, three miles into this right now, and we hope to be there in another five, six miles or so to the house that we're going to explore. Curtis, who's steering the camera for you right now, is the uh, paranormal expert on board in the house tonight. We are, I, what time do you think it is, Curtis? Any idea? You don't have to look at a watch. Probably pushing around midnight, I would yeah, think. Right, yeah. So this is true, midnight mushing, and... Um, it's a perfect evening. It's uh, got a just a tinge, if you will, of chill in the air, uh, keeping the dogs comfortable with puddles all over the place, letting them cool their pads, as I say, as well as getting hydrated. Of course, we have hydration on board water, but um, they prefer they prefer it from the ground when available, and it's clean around here. It's no car contact or anything of the sorts. Um, that's how we handle when we come into contact with any 
uh, police or law enforcement, of course, you know, we pull over and abide by any laws they say. Luckily, he let us carry on. Said, you know, I could see we're up to just getting the dog some exercise. But um, he said it's a little intimidating running into uh, four guys with uh, four dogs. <laughs> he said, you know, you can understand me. And he wanted to see my ID, make sure I wasn't wanted. <laughs> so, so far I'm not wanted. I'm, I said I might be the wanted dog driver, wolf driver that is. But uh, beside, I might be wanted for, uh, I don't know what, maybe not bringing my Chinese crested today. But beautiful evening as i said we're seeing lots of lightning bugs out this time of year cool stuff and they can reflect and light up like eyes in the woods so kind of confuses our eyes when we're looking at them like is that eyes is it a flashlight a reflector what's going on dogs picking up a little speed here folks and uh everybody's really running great cooler temperature out here yeah lightning bugs so cooler temperature out here and uh, again once you're on we're really close to the potomac river so you get that cool breeze coming off of there. Um, it helps keep it cooler in the area and just great for the dogs, of course. So I hope you caught our earlier live broadcast. And by the way, Curtis, if you see any comments that I can, you can read, let me know. Um, we're trying our best to comment and to uh, keep the broadcast going. So it gets a little hectic, as you can see. I think we were broadcasting throughout that whole police stop. Pretty interesting stuff. Crossing these areas, the, where, where we were pulled over by the police was actually a tunnel we were over top of. And uh, this looks like another kind of tunnel or um, uh, area we're crossing, where we're sitting up high. Yeah, another tunnel look looked like. So, this has got, this trail has got so many interesting features to it that uh, from the terrain or from the topography through the mountains it goes and um, through the, uh, the flatlands the farmlands and lots of river shots and uh, cave and cliff dwellings were really interesting actually the park ranger I, I didn't know the gap trail which is the continuation theoretically of the CNO but that is a state park whereas this is a federal park and the gap trail is not um, was not originally from what he said the original layout of what the this trail was supposed to be so i thought the gap trail continued from the cno of the original footprint of what the cno was supposed to follow but he said no i have to look that one up <laughs> you think i'm right yeah i mean it only makes sense but yeah it was that's yeah i don't know but um he was a young guy, we'll give him a break. <laughs> With age comes experience, something like that. Wisdom, yeah. <laughs> Is it? Okay, we can plug that in we'll, on our next stop. We still have 20%. We'll do that. So that'll be just one more thing for you to balance, Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope everyone out there can appreciate the uh, lens we go to to bring these broadcasts to you. With this new Facebook technology, we're really enjoying ourselves, um, being able to give narrated tours of what we do because it's so interesting and it gives us just another way to truly document it. So hopefully one day we can look back on all this and realize how fortunate we were to be able to do this. And uh, sorry, just focusing on something in the middle of the trail, seeing if it was something I needed to be concerned with. As well as when unusual things happen, like uh, being pulled over in a dog rig by a cop. <laughs> it's um, pretty cool stuff, to say the least. Especially when it's uh, no big deal. The cop lets you go. Carry on. Well, I guess he's a federal game warden, isn't he? What? Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> so the um, trail here is tree covered. We're back in the woods, in the forest. And um, some areas, as I said, will get more open. Some areas are like that crush and run material. Some of the trail where um, you might see on driveways or small roads. And some of the trail is dirt and grass, which we're on tonight, it looks like. And uh, nicer because the dogs prefer the dirt and grass because, again, it holds the scent of other animals it's more porous so it gives them more excitement and more smells to engage as they go along and it's a better motivator actually 
when you get to the hard surfaces, it doesn't hold the sense like that. And uh, but the bike does roll a little freely, freer on that those hard surfaces. Right, we'll stop and I'll take a break. So sometimes um, we we'll have people ask, well, why do I run the dogs? And I run them for exercise, of course. These are huskies. And huskies have a ton of energy and an insatiable appetite to run forever. And if you don't properly exercise them, they exhibit a lot of unwanted behaviors. And uh, they're actually one of the most abandoned dog breeds out there because they're a great-looking dog, and people get them. They're lured by those looks. They're one of the closest breeds to the wolf. But when people get them and they start getting behavioral issues and they have trouble controlling them on a leash or um, from too much digging or becoming escape artists in their backyards getting out, of the uh, fenced-in area even. They can dig out, they can jump, whatever. That's when um, people say, well, I can't control this dog and I need to, um, unfortunately, rehome them. And um, what I like to do through what I, through all these wolf driver activities, is show people that there's many a ways that we can work with high-energy breed dogs, such as the Husky, and help them engage their energy in a format format that'll work for their pet companions, their, their human companions. And what I mean by that is, for instance, if you're elderly and you, maybe you can't ride a bicycle, then there's a vehicle like I'm riding right now, which is called a recumbent bike, for lack of a better description. And they're made in trikes, which are three wheels, which you can't tip over, and they're made in four-wheel quads, which I'm on right now. And Rhett, who's behind me with Doug, is on the three-wheel version, the trike. They all look they look very similar. It's just if you look underneath, you can see three or four wheels. And so um, if you're not a bike rider, you could get on one of these, and if you have a bad back, you could enjoy being on one of these because of the recumbent position. It's easier to engage to to pedal and to address other ailments that you may have whether it's back related or uh, knee related whatever in addition the bikes we're on have pedal assisted motors or they'll actually go by just a throttle so again if you were in a position where you couldn't pedal or you were to a hill that you wouldn't have to get off of this. You could stay in it and use the motor. You could use the motor for the whole way if you wanted to. It's up to you. Um, and your dog can be your partner on it. Your dog can just run with it if it chooses to. If you have the proper attachments, it can pull. And you should have your dog harnessed whenever they're on a vehicle like this. Your footsteps to my left. And so that's just one way. Uh, additionally, there's... I run, if you saw me earlier today, I did a live broadcast. We're still on, Curtis? Yeah, we're still. We did a live broadcast of actually a Chinese crested that we have who's 10 pounds. So all the 10 pounds versus these big dogs. And you can see the wide array of animals, or wide array of dogs that my activities can cover. And the Chinese crested is not, actually Chinese crested is, can be a high energy breed as well and they can actually engage in weight pulling when i put her on the scooter the scooter is kind of like a bike but with a platform if you will no paddles so you would need to kick to run it what i mean by kick is um, put your foot on the ground and push off with your foot but of course
Or us. Yeah. I, you know, I said you can see we're not up to no. Okay, great. So um, what I was saying, folks, is uh, if you saw me on the scooter earlier with Gigi, our Chinese crested, she um, she can engage in these activities, sure, in a different capacity, but balanced properly, she can run with the big dogs. Going through a little bit of an area, i got to focus here for a sec. Um, looks like a, a bridge, if you will. And, uh, yeah, we'll just be able to push right over this. So Gigi is awesome. She's the Chinese crested and a little frog on the trail. This is low light. The what's that? Of oh, the cooler. Oh. Okay. Got it. Okay, folks, just putting a little power back. Oh, cool. You're getting some good video, dude. Hey, um. Yep. Oh, you don't. I don't have. I need the battery pack. Hey, uh. Doug, you. Uh, I got one on the bike case. Do I have the bike case on here? Yeah, I do. Okay, I might be cool. Good, keep filming. Yeah, folks, uh, we're just uh, putting a little power in our uh, situation.